Okay. Yeah, so I think it's just huge because it is the future of not America, but of humanity and how good our teachers are. And also, I think it's important for the students uh, to be more alive and, and, and love learning. We find in the Gallup World Poll, in every culture, I've learned new things is a very good predictor of positive emotions and enjoyment. Now, most people say, oh, learning new things. I hate learning new things, right? Because they think of some boring thing. Because they don't realize that they are learning things just naturally every day that are just fun to learn. And so as humans, we have big brains. So we're, we're built to enjoy learning. It doesn't mean we enjoy all learning. But it should be an enjoyable experience. The other reason is because if you are a good teacher, you get reinforcement and it's rewarding in itself. I have students that come back after 20, even 30 years or email me. Today a student emailed me, I probably haven't seen that student in 25 years. And so that's very rewarding and they tell you what they're doing in life and so forth. So it's exciting and it keeps you involved and connected. I love teaching and I'd like to talk about strengths as a lecturer, but eventually I'm going to tell you why I think you got to do more than lecturing to be a good teacher. But let's talk about some things that I think are very important to lecturing. One is you got to be ultimately organized. You can't, unless you're more of a genius than I am, just go in there and totally wing it. And if you've prepared what you're going to say and think about it and organize it, you're probably going to be a better lecturer. But the key to being a good lecturer is remembering that you're not just trying to get information across. Because if you just want to get information across, have them read the textbook, have them read a book, or you write it down and they can read it, and they can review it, and they're probably going to get more out of it. So lecturing is more than just information. It's making the material come alive to people. It's making them enthusiastic about it. And one of the reasons I went into psychology was I took an undergraduate course, and I was a, an agriculture major, so I was way over here, but I took a psych course, and the professor was so interesting, it just came alive, and I said, wow, I love this, and then I got into it. So one of your jobs is not to just communicate information, but to communicate enthusiasm, love for the thing, and make it come alive in terms of things that they can relate to, things that are in their own lives and that they care about. It's absolutely a problem. I mean, in many uh, colleges, you're going to teach the same course every semester. And, and then, you know, after 10 years, that means, you know, you're on your 20th time. Let me tell you, I have never given a lecture more th than once. That is to say, when I go around giving talks around the country, they, they have some similar material, but I always change them some. I always try to make them more appropriate for that audience. It's not, it's more work because it takes an extra hour or two to change the talk, but it keeps it fresh, it keeps it interesting, and it makes your talk better because you don't just become predictable like a robot. Same thing for undergraduate teaching. That doesn't mean I change every lecture and everything about it. No, I keep the core, but I'm always updating each lecture a little bit, changing a little bit. Some lecture, occasionally I'll throw out a lecture, bring in a new lecture. And of course, it's to stay up to date. You want to do that and bring in the newest material. But the real reason is to stay fresh and exciting yourself so that you sort of are still captured by the material. Now, one of the things young people have to know, though, is that writing that lecture the first time is time-consuming. It takes me about one day to write one hour. So when I, the first time I teach a course, I and I've never taught it before, I'm spending three days a week for a three-hour course. Well, that's most of you, that's a lot of your time. So you do want repeats in your schedule, but you don't want to become just uh, you know routine. So you want to bring it in a little new stuff, but you don't want to rewrite your lectures. Now, one of the things that um, helped me was I did teach a little bit in grad school, so that when I got out, I had lectures because that first year on the job can really be crushing because if especially if you have to teach two or three new classes really it's pretty much all your time you don't get much research done that that year um, so but I do think it pays off in the sense that 
you've now spent a day thinking about your lecture, so you've really thought about what material should go in, what shouldn't. Uh, you've planned some jokes. You've planned some engaging material to, you know, maybe even an exercise or two to engage people. And then it really pays off the preparation. One of the things that I believe is that most of the content you cover, they never remember. They're going to remember some important things. Decide what the important things are that you want them to take away. One of those important things may be a curiosity about the world so they continue to learn. I would say that it's a mistake to say, I've got to cover everything and I'm going to teach them every darn thing there is to know about social psych, right? And I'm going to teach them this little thing and this little thing. There's a billion. And uh, I'd say, boy, if you can get them to actually use and remember 10 or 20 things, just 20 concepts in their life and be able to use those, boy, that's going to be successful.